I'm a little shocked that you would criticize my mother-in-law. If you're not working, why don't you get out of here? My sister-in-law and mother-in-law, who did not know that I was taking over my mother-in-law's debt, threw these words at me without the slightest sense of gratitude. Yes, I understand. But it's up to you guys from now on. The day I packed my bags, they realized a fact I had been hiding and put their heads together. My name is Emma. I am 32 years old, a busy career woman working in an office in the city. When I was a student, I spent most of my time in the corner of the library absorbed in my books. After I got a job, I was buried under a mountain of work and forgot to take time for myself. One of my friends, who sincerely cared about me, said, Emma, why don't you try to cherish your love life a little? And she organized a group blind date for me. Then, a man whose eyes met mine was John, who worked in a building in the city center. He is a fresh salary man working in a building in the city center. And to my surprise, he seemed to be a little interested in me. I was nervous about the feeling of dating after a long time, but supported by his kind words, we gradually opened our hearts to each other. Then he made a gentle confession to me, and our love accelerated. Only one year later, we decided to get married. It was like a dream come true that I, who had been so absorbed in my work, could stand at such a wonderful turning point in my life. My friend who organized the group blind date was also surprised at our sudden development. She said, oh, really? You're getting married? I said, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? But it's great. I'm so glad I organized that group blind date. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the wedding. I'm looking forward to it. Thus, I was to open the door to a new life. First, we reported to each other's families. Seeing me so happy, my parents welcomed him warmly. Emma, you haven't told me about your boyfriend for a long time, so I was a little worried that maybe you wouldn't get married. John, please take care of her from now on. When I heard these words, I felt as if I realized for the first time what my parents really thought of me. I realized that parents think a lot of things without saying them. My family had been basically free to do whatever I wanted, so there was no pressure to get married. But it seems that in my parents' mind, there was a wish to see their daughter happily married someday. Knowing such a parent's wish made my heart warm a little. And when I visited John's house for the first time, I met his family with nervous excitement. But his mother and father were both very warm and made me feel very safe. Next, we had dinner with the whole family. While I was looking forward to it, I was also a little nervous, especially because I had heard that John's sister, Melissa, was there. She was only 25 years old and her choice of words was a little rough at times, which made me a little confused. She asked me, Emma, you're already at that age, weren't you getting married too late? I was a little shocked to hear her say things like, I would have decided sooner if I were you. But John followed up and we had a nice dinner afterwards. We then planned our wedding and had a happy wedding at a place we loved. We had a lot of friends and family there and the day was really great. Our honeymoon was so much fun and when we returned home, we started our new life together. Life together was fresh and every day was so much fun. We went out on dates and watched movies at home. I felt that newlyweds are really happy. It has been about two years since we got married. One day, our peaceful everyday life changed drastically. We received the news that my father-in-law had passed away. Of course, I knew he had health problems, but I had not expected him to pass away so soon. My husband and I were deeply saddened by this sudden news. My mother-in-law's grief was especially deep and I could feel her emotions as I looked at her. But our surprise was compounded by what we subsequently found out. In fact, my mother-in-law was in deep debt. It was apparently due to the fact that she had been cheated by some unscrupulous person and lost a large sum of money. When we learned of this fact, we could only gape. My husband, with his usual gentle nature, said he wanted to help her somehow. 
So, we decided to use our shared savings to reduce my mother-in-law's debt as much as possible. I thought it would be too hard for her to bear that heavy debt alone after my father-in-law's death. However, my mother-in-law's reaction was a little unexpected. She said something like, if I am in trouble again, can I ask John for help? My husband was a little surprised and replied, that's a little. My mother-in-law said something positive, but I'll find a way to get more money somehow. But my husband was worried. I hope that's not gambling. We kept a watchful eye on my mother-in-law and were on the lookout for any trouble she might get herself into again. In the midst of all this, my husband was suddenly injured and had to be hospitalized. That event also became a big ordeal for my husband and me. Since every day was spent flitting back and forth from the hospital to take care of my husband, I never noticed any changes in my mother-in-law's daily routine. Then one day, after my husband was discharged from the hospital, I decided to pay a little visit to his parents' home. During our first reunion in a long time, I could sense that something had changed in the atmosphere. Mom, long time no see. My husband greeted her with a smile, and my mother-in-law said, John, you are getting better. Can you run again? She smiled at him and said. While smiling at this exchange, my husband began to flip through my mother-in-law's bank book. To his surprise, the money in his mother-in-law's bank book, which we had accumulated after her previous debts had been repaid, was almost completely gone. What's wrong with this bank book, mother? My husband exclaimed in surprise, to which his mother-in-law replied with a slightly embarrassed smile, You know, I had tea with friends and found a nice little bag. And then I found myself in this mess. She laughed bitterly. With that one word, my husband and I froze in complete surprise. It was as if we had saved money for our mother-in-law's future and she had spent it happily without a care in the world. My husband couldn't help but say, Mom, you shouldn't spend it like this. Do you know how much we put our hearts into giving you money for your future? He said something like that. Seeing my mother-in-law's remorse, we became truly concerned about her future. We suggested that she move in with us to support her life closer to us. When we broached the subject, my mother-in-law's eyes lit up with joy, and she gave up her house and moved into our apartment. Our new shared life together began, and my mother-in-law seemed to enjoy every day of it. The three of us laughed and talked around the table at every meal, and my mother-in-law volunteered to help with the housework, which made life surprisingly easy for both of us. Her upbeat mood was infectious, and our days became brighter and warmer. I said, Mom, what would you like for lunch today? Hum, I think I'll have you then. That sounds good. Since I was working remotely, I was in a position to monitor how my mother-in-law spent her money. Since we, my husband and I, provided her living expenses and my husband managed my mother-in-law's account, there was supposed to be no worry about her spending excessive money. However, we kept a close eye on her, worried that she might spend the money in some way. These days continued and in no time at all, six months passed. One afternoon, while we were relaxing in the living room, the intercom rang. We wondered who it was, and when I answered, I found my sister-in-law, Melissa, standing there. I said, Melissa, it's been a while. Is my mother there? I was a little surprised to hear her ask such a question without even saying hello, but I showed her into the living room. Mom, it's been a while. Oh, Melissa, what brings you here? I just wanted to see your face once in a while. Thanks, I'm glad you're here. How are you? Of course. I'm fine. John is with me. So, do you want to go to lunch with me? Sure, let's go. Melissa must have taken my mother-in-law to a restaurant or something. We decided to wait at home. When they came home in the evening, we looked at them and their faces changed. Then Melissa said, Emma, you are tormenting my mother, aren't you? I was surprised and could not understand what she was saying. My mother-in-law also looked at me sternly. My husband said, what are you talking about? There is no way Emma would do such a thing. He immediately took my side, but Melissa would not budge. John is being deceived too. 
Mom says she can't go outside and she hears Emma is saying things inside the house. We could only be amazed. Indeed, there were times when my mother-in-law would ask to go shopping and we would refuse because she would waste money. Also, my mom said you were taking her money. I had to admit that this statement surprised me. Did my mother-in-law think so or did Melissa blow it that way? In any case, it seemed that Melissa and my mother-in-law had joined together in accusing me. Now, what do you want from me? I was about to feel like I was bewitched by a fox. What on earth did they want to tell me? I wondered if they just wanted to say something to me. At that moment, my sister-in-law said something I never thought she would say. She said, I want you to leave our house. I feel like my mother can't really live happily with you because I can't believe you treat my mother-in-law so coldly. Her face clouded over. My mother-in-law looked as if she wanted to say something and turned to me. If you were gone, I would be able to relax and enjoy my time with John and Melissa. I was surprised by her words, but I could not say anything. In fact, they did not know that I had previously paid off her debts for my mother-in-law by cutting into my savings. Looking back, I probably should have made it clear to them at the time that I had not taken it out as our marital savings, but as my own. When I looked at my husband's face, he looked very angry. His hands were clenched and his body was shaking a little. Melissa said, my mother and I are going to live here together from now on. So, I want you to leave, my sister-in-law said again. Taking a deep breath for a moment, I answered my sister-in-law, I understand, but I won't get involved in what happens next. After that exchange, my husband and I decided to leave the house. And on the day we moved out, they were surprised to discover one truth. Looks like you've made arrangements to move out right away after all. Yes, I have something to tell Melissa. Yes, what is it? My husband chuckled and said, actually, you know, I'm getting older and I was thinking that I should put the house in Melissa's name. My sister-in-law's eyes sparkled and she said, really, it's going to be my house? She said excitedly. My husband quietly produced the documents for the change of name and said, as long as you sign here, that's all right. My sister-in-law happily said, I can't believe I have my own apartment and signed it. My husband and I looked at each other stealthily and exchanged smiles at the success of our plan. Well, it's time to start getting ready to leave. What John, are you really leaving? Yes, I've decided to leave too. Oh, even John is leaving? Do you really have to leave with Emma? If I'm not with Emma, I don't feel comfortable either. It's normal for married couples to be together. I knew you would say that, but then what are we going to do about future house expenses and stuff? That's something you'll have to devise and pay for on your own. Wait a minute. I quit my job because I believed you would support me, okay? My husband and I could not hide our surprise at my sister-in-law's sudden statement. If you keep this up, you're going to get me and our mother into a lot of trouble. That's fine if you can devise a way to live on your own. You have our mother's pension, and if you save a little, you can manage. Yes, and if you add my pension to that, we can manage. Since you're going to live here, we need to be creative about it. My sister-in-law looked a little satisfied with my mother-in-law's kind words. Indeed. It's my new home. If I save a little money, I should be able to get by. However, my husband and I laughed inwardly at my sister-in-law saying such a thing, not knowing that the property was a rental. About that time, the movers arrived. We welcomed them and began to move more and more stuff out. My sister-in-law and mother-in-law rolled their eyes at the sight. What are you doing? Getting ready to move out. Are you taking everything? Of course, we bought all this stuff. Do I have to buy everything new? That's right. I wish you had known that and acted accordingly. Well, we better get going. My husband smiled and said, and we left the house. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law froze in amazement for a while. After a while, my sister-in-law called my husband's cell phone. She said, hey, John, what's with the rent bill all of a sudden? I was a little mistaken. 
Could it be that I am not the owner of this house? Who told you about that? Well, I'm actually renting this house. The document you signed at that time, which was the rental agreement. So, it's only natural that you should be charged for the rent. Seriously, I didn't know that at all. It's where you live, so you have to pay the rent. But my salary is not that much compared to you. You may laugh, but Emma actually makes more money than I do. Oh, no. It's true. She is working hard at a remote company that pays pretty well. That's why we were able to live so comfortably in that apartment. My sister-in-law was so surprised that she was speechless for a while. Next, I heard my mother-in-law's worried voice. We're so sorry, she said. I'm really sorry. Could you please reconsider and come back? My husband responded gently but firmly. Thank you, mother. But it's hard for me to go back because of your attitude toward Emma. She is the most important to me. Please take care of the rest. You will take care of it. After that exchange, I heard various rumors. My sister-in-law and mother-in-law had apparently been forced to look for an apartment after getting tripped up on rent payments. They are now trying to make do in a small apartment that is barely big enough for the two of them to live in, but it is said that they are having financial problems and occasional fights. They are also concerned about the neighbor's eyes on them. John and I have started a new life in our new house. Every day is fun and full of happiness.